Okay, good morning. Uh, name is Javier Becerra. I'm the chairman of the Democratic Caucus, joined by our vice chairman, Joe Crowley from New York. Uh, we just had a good session with our members. Many uh, were, well, they're activated. Uh, they feel very pumped up by what they heard the president say last week in the State of the Union, call for action uh, in what has become the worst do-nothing Congress in our history. It's nice to know that the president's saying, let's work together, let's get things done. I think for many of us, it was also a relief to hear the president say that if Congress will continue in its do-nothing ways, that he will do what he can through his executive authority as president of the United States. And so what we're hoping is that first, we can get things done the way they're supposed to get done under the Constitution, working uh, with the executive, the legislative branch to get things done. But if the dysfunction in uh, in Washington, the brick walls that uh, Republican leaders say they're going to put up to progress uh, persist, then we hope that the president will do what he can to help Americans continue to find work, to get paid a decent wage. His call for a, an increase in the minimum wage, at least for employees who work for federal contractors, I think we wholeheartedly support that. It's about time. But we know that really Congress must ask to raise the minimum wage. We can't just ask the president to do uh, bits and pieces through his executive authority. We need Congress to act. And so it's really a question of action, as the president said, versus brick walls, as I believe uh, Speaker Boehner said, that uh, his Republican members would be prepared to put up brick walls uh, to some of the president's proposals. Uh, it's time to move on some of these things. It was great to see that the, the Republican, our Republican colleagues in the House were prepared to put out a letter to the president saying, let's find some common ground. These are things that we think we can work on together. I don't know if you saw the letter or read it. I did. Not once did that letter by our Republican leaders in the House mention the middle class. Uh, what else did they leave out of their letter on what they want to do with the president this year? Well, they didn't mention once trying to help the 1.7 million Americans who today no longer have their unemployment insurance as they try to get back to work. Uh, the letter did not mention in one syllable increasing the minimum wage for Americans who are working hard but still living in poverty after coming home from work. It didn't mention one word about ensuring women receive equal pay for equal work or receive sick leave or access to quality health care, uh, or excuse me, child care for their children as they try to go to work. Not a word of making it in America, as Democrats have said, that we should build things here, manufacture here, rather than ship jobs abroad. And I'm not sure there was a word mentioned about finally fixing a very broken immigration system, which the President and Democrats in the Congress have been prepared to do since last year. We've got proposals out. The Senate passed by a bipartisan basis their immigration bill, which fixes our, our border security, fixes the workplace, and deals rationally in a common sense way with the undocumented immigrants who are here in this country. Uh, that passed bipartisanly, 68 votes out of 100, six months ago. Four months ago, Democrats introduced uh, legislation that does something similar, which has now over 190 co-sponsors on it, including Republican colleagues. So we're hoping our Republican colleagues will catch up, get some things done, because we would like this to be a year of action, not just a year of brick walls. And finally, I think it's worth noting as we talk about these brick walls, we've heard it before, other brick walls, so-called death panels, so-called government takeover of health care. And now, of course, it's um, Betty in Spokane. Betty in Spokane. So as 9 million Americans now can count on health security as a result of the Affordable Care Act, they now have health insurance through the exchanges or through their parents because they get to stay on their parents' health insurance policy now until they reach the age of 26, or maybe it's through the Medicaid program. But 9 million Americans today have health security that they uh, can count on. And the best thing that our Republicans Republican colleagues can give us is Betty in Spokane, who they use as an example of a horror story of health security, when, of course, when you dig deeper, 
Betty in Spokane could have gotten a health care policy under the Affordable Care Act through these exchanges, chose not to even search for a policy. And so when she came out with this story, and it was uh, reiterated by our Republican colleagues, it made it sound like there was something aghast, something wrong. Well, these are the kinds of uh, deceptive practices that make it tough for Americans to believe that Washington will get its work done. Whether it's the original claims of a government takeover of our health care, whether it was the claim of death panels in the Affordable Care Act, or whether it's now the ugly Betty story, uh, it's time for us to get to work. Action, not brick walls. We are ready to work. We're pleased that the President has invited Democrats from the House of Representatives to go visit. I'm sure he'll be continuing to invite Republicans and Democrats alike to visit him in the White House. But we're looking forward to working with the President on a year of action for 2014. And with that, let me yield to our Vice Chairman, Joe Crowley. Thank you, Mr. Becerra. Uh, around this time of year, we, uh, I guess in many respects, uh, I don't want to say celebrate, but commemorate uh, Groundhog Day. Uh, today feels an awful lot like another Groundhog Day. I was here last week talking about some of the same things I'm going to speak about today, some of the same things I spoke about weeks ago and weeks ago, uh, a different day but the same uh, subject matter. I'm told that uh, the speaker uh, raised his head and saw his shadow, uh, and that what it really forebodes for the American people is at least, uh, we'll use in terms, six more weeks of winter, economic winter for the American people. Uh, a much longer economic window than they deserve. Uh, when they're looking forward to an economic spring and hopefully for an economic summer and a period of growth for our economy, uh, that's not the message that uh, the House Republican leadership is lending to the American people today. As the chairman mentioned, 1.7 million Americans now find themselves on unemployment. Uh, that means that their economic uh, winter isn't getting better, it's actually getting worse. It's like a major snowstorm just hit their family uh, because what little bit they got to help them get through these difficult times has been taken away from them. Uh, that is a, a horrific event for families that rely upon those funds to help them get them through these difficult times. And what's the answer by the Republican uh, caucus? Once again, to create an, another man-made fiscal cliff. And here we are coming up to the debt ceiling. And what have they done again? They once again have tied the debt ceiling to another issue, actually two issues, a pipeline through pristine parts of America, and once again, an attempt to undermine the Affordable Care Act. It's the same, it's a new day, with the same story over and over again. And what it really says, I believe, about this, the Republican caucus is their indifference to the American people. The American people who are suffering today are invisible to the leadership of the Republican House Representatives and the Republican Caucus. They don't get it. What, what does it mean for the average person? Let's not talk world economics for the moment. We know what uh, the failure to pay our debt, what it would mean to the, the world economy. But what would it mean to the average person? Their Social Security check, delayed. The veteran whose check would be that people are expecting to help get them through this economic winter to be delayed will have incredible impact on those individuals. The interest rates that will go up in this country, the interest rates and the borrowing rates not only for Americans but for our own government to borrow money, for states to borrow money, uh, will go uh, up. That's the answer? That's helping America grow? That's helping our economy? I don't think so. Uh, so we have to stop playing these fiscal games of, of gamesmanship, uh, of, of fiscal cliffs that we don't need. The American people don't need this during these times right now. What they need is insurance. They need a government that's working for them and a government that is setting the tone for fiscal growth in this country. And the Republican leadership of the House of Representatives is not providing that right now. Take a couple of questions before we run to our markup. Yes. Uh, you at all heading into the election that so many of your high-profile members are leaving, deciding to not stay here? You know, we, many of us have been here for a while, and we've gotten to know 
the caliber of some of our colleagues and uh, some of our colleagues who have decided to uh, retire uh, leave us taking a lot of experience and institutional knowledge, and it's going to be tough to replace. Uh, there is something to be said with knowing the process and how to get legislation done. Uh, we wish them well. Uh, you know, it's always always tough to replace very capable people, and um, whether it's Congressman Miller, Congressman Waxman, Congressman Moran, and now Congressman Andrews, um, we could use their talents. And uh, the, the beautiful thing is that we know that there will be some fantastic people that we can count on to replace them. But again, it's, it's a lot of experience. And uh, while we wish them well, we will miss everything they brought to not just Congress, but to the American people. Uh, they're excellent uh, members of Congress. I, I, all four of them I know very well, and they've, they've been tremendous at helping move America forward. Uh, Joe? I'll just briefly say this, an observation I'll make. Uh, Mr. Waxman, Mr. Miller, and Mr. Andrews all played a critical role in the passage of the Affordable Care Act. I think it speaks volumes to their confidence that the Affordable Care Act is law, that it will be law, um, and now that they've helped make it that law, and also be law for years to come. I think it, uh, it's, a, it's a mark of confidence that they have uh, that that law will not be undermined in the future. Uh, and so we thank them for their service. We thank them all, including Mr. Moran as well, uh, people who have made uh, an indelible mark uh, here in the House and in our country as well. But I think, as Javier has mentioned as well, they're all very talented people. We suspect that more talented people will come. It's the beauty of America and of our electoral system that as some leave, we get uh, new energy and uh, look forward to that as well. Mr. Chairman, can you give us a preview of the President's remarks at your retreat in coming days and what motivates him to be there? Well, I think when the President comes to speak to House Democrats as we gather for an issues conference to prepare for all the big agenda items that we have in 2014, uh, I think the the operative word is going to be action. I think the president will tell us we can get things done. Uh, Congress, Capitol Hill, looks like a graveyard for good ideas these days. But I, I believe the president is going to tell us it shouldn't be that way, that we can do a number of things. And uh, I believe he's going to outline again every which way that working with Congress, we can move this country forward, get it back to work, make it so that everyone aspires to the middle class. And I believe that we're going to have a whole lot of Democrats in, the, in our House Democratic Caucus who are ready to work with the President and with our Republican colleagues to make sure that gets done. Yeah. Have there been any concern expressed from members of the CDC about judicial appointments and the diversity within the South? Um, can you share the concerns CDC discusses with our caucus? I'm not uh, aware of the specific concerns that are raised. I will say that uh, Coming from a Democratic caucus in the House of Representatives, which is the most diverse group of elected representatives ever in the history of our nation, uh, if when you look at Democrats in the House of Representatives, you're looking at America. Uh, and we're two examples of it, and we're very proud of that. Uh, our leader, Nancy Pelosi, uh, has been a phenomenal uh, leader for Democrats and for this nation. And so we're very proud of what we have done. We look at the White House and the administration and all the folks that have come in from very diverse backgrounds, the most talented people in America, and we're very pleased by that. That doesn't mean that uh, there aren't areas where we would like to see more progress. I certainly know that there are a lot of talented people in the Latino community who should have an opportunity to serve their, their country in the federal government, uh, and I would like to make sure that we continue to make progress for a uh, growing community that has many talented people who would like to serve. But I'm not familiar with any specific uh, issue or, or concern. I would simply say that we continue to want to make progress. And certainly the House Democrats are a clear example of how you can make progress in making uh, our bodies that represent us in government look like the people that we're there to represent. Joe? Any other questions? Yeah. I have no doubt that we're going to have a frank conversation with the president on any number of issues. Uh, that's a great thing about our, our members. They are always willing to be very candid and forthright. 
We, in, we enjoy animated conversations, including with the president, and the president in, loves to engage. Uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a great thing when you have a commander in chief who is willing to talk to all of us, and not just the troops, not just the leaders, but everybody, and uh, have that good conversation. That's why I think when he issued his State of the Union speech, he struck so many chords for Americans because I think he's listening. And I think, once again, when House Democrats have a chance to gather with him, I think he'll listen very closely. Uh, and in terms of uh, issues like fast track, uh, I think he's going to hear that a lot of us want to continue to see us expand our opportunity to send American products abroad, export more than we have to import, and how we do that and how we make sure markets are open to us and that if we're going to trade with a partner, that it's based on free and fair trade. And so I think you're going to have a, a, you'll see a robust discussion about that. Where we end up, we'll see. Uh, the president has made trade a big part of his agenda. We agree so long it's, it's fair trade that lets us, uh, lets our uh, manufacturers send our American products abroad and not simply open our doors so that people can flood our markets with their goods. We want to make sure it's free, but we want to make sure it's also fair. Any other thoughts? No? Thank you all very much.